to the first Sci-Fi on the Rock TV for 2010. Uh, I'm Steve Lake. Um, absent of my co-host this evening, Alan unfortunately had some uh, things to take care of, but she'll be joining us again as the series goes on. Tonight I'll be interviewing um, Mark Todd, one of our committee members, about some of his uh, Doctor Who involvement in uh, Sci-Fi on the Rock 4. As well, I'll be talking to Melanie Collins about some of the volunteer stuff going on at Sci-Fi on the Rock 4. All that and more, so stay tuned. And joining me now is Mark Todd from the Sci-Fi on the Rock Organizing Committee. Nice to have you here, Mark. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to be looking, you're doing a couple of Doctor Who uh, related events here at uh, Sci-Fi on the Rock 4. Yeah. Yes, I am. Um, going to be doing a Doctor Who panel discussion. Going to be talking about uh, how I became involved with Doctor Who as a child watching it, and then uh, some of the conventions I attended in the UK over the years, 25 years actually. And then I'm going to be doing a very short uh, tribute to the late Barry Letts, who was a very influential producer in the early 70s, and indeed he cast one of the best Doctor Who, Tom Baker. My favourite Doctor, my first, the first Doctor I ever saw, yes, of course. Yes. Probably the most remembered Doctor, as, yes, he was, as far yes. as the scarf goes. Yes, <laughs> and he, he filled those shoes for seven great years. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, as you're going through these different panels, I mean, you said the first one you're going to be talking about, you were involved in. How did you get involved with Doctor Who? Oh, basically it started with uh, Saturday tea time television. Uh, my grandparents had a colour TV, my mum didn't, so we used to go and see them on a Saturday. And I would sit there and watch bright colours come on the screen and then run behind the sofa and shout. And then my nan would say, oh, you've got to turn that off. And that was in the early 70s with the late, great John Pertwee with Doctor Who. Of course, the opening is enough to frighten anybody oh, as yes, when you're young. Yes. And that evil looking man with the beard. Uh, <laughs> the master. The master. Mm, yes. <laughs> Awesome. Um, and the second panel, you said, is going to be dedicated to talking about... Yes, uh, some of it will be dedicated to the late Barry Lett, uh, producer and director of Doctor Who for many years, and also about other influential British uh, contributors to science fiction over the years, including writers, producers, and a few actors as well. Okay, sounds good. Uh, sounds like something we're going to want to check out. I'm going to want to check it out, because I'm, I'm a closet Whovian myself. Excellent, and there's so, quite a few out there. Yeah. Um, we got a little paradise here now. Yes. <laughs> and of course, I never leave the house without my uh, sonic, sonic screwdriver. Awesome. <laughs> you never know when you're going to need it. Could be that, like around the corner at any time. Absolutely. Okay, now, in addition to the panels, uh, as a committee member, you're also putting together um, a luncheon. Yes. Like uh, we did last year. Yes, a Doctor Who lunch, uh, which is happening on the Saturday of the convention. Uh, that would be between 12 noon and one thirty. And that's the, the uh, Scalon room in the Scalero room, room. Yeah, the Scalero yeah, okay. room in the um, restaurant. Uh, and basically, people who wish to come along and participate will pay for their own meals, and uh, they will all sit and enjoy a meal. And we will be showing uh, an episode of Doctor Who. Uh, and then after that, we will have uh, a little competition to judge the best uh, Doctor Who good guy and villain uh, cool. according to their costume. Cool. So if you want to show in costume. Uh, mm -hmm. Saturday afternoon of the convention, uh, you've got to be paid admission to the convention to attend a uh, Doctor Who luncheon. If you want to dress up as your favorite doctor, you want to dress up as your favorite villain, maybe a couple of masters running around. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We're going to have prizes for the best villain and the best doctor. Um, you do have to pay for your own meal, and we will be showing an episode of Doctor Who uh, as yet to be determined, Mark? Yes, that's right. Uh, we're still working on that uh, point at the moment. But uh, fun was had by all last year, and fun will be had by all this year. Perfect. Well. Thank you, Mark, for joining me. Thank you very much, Steve. Thanks, Thanks for seeing you. Me. Looking forward to seeing everything in April. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. Joining me now is Melanie Collins. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the volunteer opportunities at Sci-Fi on the Rock 4. Mm -hmm. Hi, Mel. Hi, Steve. Uh, your official position with Sci-Fi on the Rock is? Volunteer coordinator. And with that position, you? I coordinate volunteers. <laughs> I get them to contact me through any sort of advertisements that we put up basically anywhere, or if they're just interested, they can contact me at the information that will be posted throughout the video. And through that, I contact them, I ask them what times they'd like to volunteer for, what kind of positions they would like, and other than that, they, I just make sure that they all go to their right places and the jobs get done. Okay, so what positions are we looking for? We're looking for basically anyone to watch the, vendor, uh, the vendor's room, uh, walk around, just sort of Keep an eye on everything, make sure that nobody's causing any trouble, uh, help with the setup and take down of workshops, okay. as well as um, watching the auction room. 
Oh, okay. Is another big one. Yeah, you have to, we got to have somebody in there. We don't want to lose nothing. The whole time, exactly, yeah. <laughs> of course. And we're looking at uh, April 17th and 18th, of course, are the dates of the convention. Yeah. So what times are we going to need people for? On Saturday, we're looking for people at the moment uh, from anywhere from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Okay. to work any number of shifts there. Uh, we may need people to stay later, but if anybody would like to volunteer to stay later to help with any of our after convention activities that will be happening that night, that would be fantastic. We are thoroughly encouraging that. <laughs> and uh, Sunday is going from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay, perfect. Uh, what kind of qualifications are we looking for? Like, what are we looking for in a volunteer? In a volunteer, we just want somebody who's able to commit to a set time. Again, we're very flexible with our shifts. We just want you to sort of show up on time reliably and do the jobs that you're stationed at. Um, basically, again, we just want somebody who can, you know, stick their, stick themselves to a position such as the vendor's room or the patrols mm -hmm. and stick to that reliably. Okay, is there an age limit? Uh, we want people who are 16 years of age or older. Anybody under that we're going to have a bit of problems with. And even then, 16 to 18, we may have to ask your parents for uh, permission, permission okay. and all that good stuff. Not a problem. And how do we contact you in order to, you know, anybody wants to volunteer, how do they get in touch with us? Okay, well, we're going to post my uh, my email. Right Hopefully down, here. Yeah, right here. Yep. And uh, you can contact me through that. Uh, you can also contact us anywhere I post advertisements. They're going to be pretty well everywhere. Different web pages yep. and newspapers. You I'm can assuming. also get your email and your contact information forwarded to me from the Sci-Fi on the Rock standard contact email. Which is changing. You want to check out the website www.scifionetherock.com for all the updated contact information. We do have some email address information changing, but it will be there. Mm -hmm. And it uh, should be fun time. So if anybody wants to volunteer, and as well I should point out, uh, if you volunteer for Saturday, you know, you work one full shift and... You work one full shift, you can stay the rest of the convention, uh, the rest of that day of the convention for free. So if you volunteer Saturday, do a shift, check out the convention on Saturday, you can hang around. If you volunteer on Sunday, Sunday, you're free for that day as well. Exactly. So, I mean, anybody wants to volunteer, and, certainly join us. Yeah, and last year we had a lot of volunteers who came and stayed for the entire day yeah. on Saturday. And they still got a chance to take, like, you know, 15-minute personal breaks as soon as, like, you know, they would come to me and they would say, Hey, can I have like you know 15 minutes to walk around? Not a problem. We're very flexible. We're glad to let you guys have some time to yourselves and wander around if you're on a shift. Not a problem at all. So again, you can contact Melanie at her email address, mm -hmm. or you can check out the website scifionrock.com for all the information on volunteering. Thanks, Mel. Not a problem. And this brings us to the end of Sci-Fi on the Rock TV, the first one for 2010. And it's also about two and a half months to convention time, so I want to send a special reminder out to any clubs or businesses. If you want to uh, join us at Sci-Fi on the Rock 2010, Sci-Fi on the Rock 4, you can come to this lovely address right here beneath me, uh, www.scifionetherock.com. And uh, you can contact us about getting your business or uh, your club represented at a table, because we're running out of space fast. So until next time, when uh, Ellen joins me again, hopefully, um, we'll see you then. Where should we